Hi everyone, I'm Louise and welcome to the Greenhouse Mentoring Project. Uh, I am currently sitting here in Hasselt in Belgium where I serve with the IFES team here. Um, and part of my job is just supporting, encouraging and training young evangelists like you. I grew up in Kent, you can probably hear that from my accent so I'm not uh, local here in Belgium. Um, and I'm super excited to be just making you guys think about how is it that you can use your skills and who you are as a person to just share Jesus with your mates. I remember when someone very first said to me, oh, I wonder if you might be a little evangelist. I had no idea what they meant. So let's just check that we all know what that means before we start. So often in Christian circles, we can use these words that um, we're not entirely sure what they mean, right? So what we mean by someone being an evangelist is simply that they're someone who shares the good news with their friends. And if that comes easily to you, it might be considered that your natural gifting is evangelism. But we're not here to talk about people who necessarily find this easy. This whole point, the whole point of this programme is that we're putting you in a greenhouse for the next few weeks to take the little seeds that you already have and grow them. So if when I use the expression, young evangelist, you said, that's absolutely not me, that's fine. It doesn't have to be something that you immediately jump to and find exciting. But I do want to say this, you are an expert in you and you're also an expert in your mates. The best people to help your mates come to know Jesus is you. You already know what's exciting to them. You already know how they tick and the way they talk. People like me who work for IFES or in other places, we don't know your mates and we don't know your campus as well as you do. You are the best place person to do this. So go ahead, let's give it a go and we'll see what happens. But you do have every skill set in your back pocket already available. God didn't put you in your friendship group by accident, nor did he put you on your course or in your sports team or whatever it is you do with your free time by accident. You have everything you already need simply by being you and by loving Jesus. So that's the premise that we want to start off with. There's no more fear because you already know what you're doing. There's no more, I don't really know enough to be this kind of person. You absolutely do. The only qualification that you need right now to share the good news with your mates is that you follow Jesus, that you believe that he died and rose again for you, and that you have some mates who you want to share that with. That's all we need for this. And then we're going to go move into the idea that it's also okay to say, I don't know. If your friend has a really tricky question about something in Genesis that you're not really sure about, that's an ideal opportunity to just say, hey, let's go on that journey together. It's actually the most freeing thing is inviting people into the journey of discovering more about God together. That's the journey that we take them on. When Jesus said, make disciples of all nations, not converts of all nations. So actually, we're doing the best job and we take them on the discipleship journey alongside us. Anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about this amazing event that you guys are putting on at the end of this year, Bob Kustig. It sounds creative and exciting, and I really hope it's sunny for you guys as well. So some of you will be creating some content which will be done on the night. Maybe it will be a song or a poem that you perform. And then some of you are going to be creating some stuff that's used for promo. So I want you to start off by thinking about who you are and what you're skilled at. So you might already know, well, I can't sing, or that's not my skill set. So I'm not going to be performing a song at Barbara Acoustic. Well, that's a really good place to start. So I'm going to invite you now, if you just want to head off and find yourself a bit of A4 paper or a really big plate of paper if you feel excited. And if you want to just pause the screen now to give yourself some time, that's OK. Great. So hopefully you're back now and you've got yourself some pen and paper. Now, I'd like you to draw a big thing that just says my skills. Put a little bubble around it. Yes, we are back in primary school. And now you're just going to write for me every single skill that you can think of that you have. It doesn't matter if it seems silly. I'm going to show you mine in a minute. 
Okay, so hopefully you've done that. And if you haven't, pause this screen. Here is mine. It's probably back to front for you guys, but I've written my skills and just a few things that came to mind when I said that. Mine says performing. I love to perform. Being in front of a camera is not unnatural to me and having studied music at uni, I got quite used to being in front of audiences. I've put also being sociable. That is a skill and I love to do it. It's something that brings me energy and I have lots and lots of friends and lots and lots of friendship groups, um, which is something that comes naturally to me. Another thing is singing. I love to sing and so I've put that down as one of my skills. I've also put songwriting. I don't necessarily think this is one of my strongest skills, but it is something I've done before and something I want to grow in. And because of that, I've also put a little line that comes out from there that says lyrics. I've said, I'm really good at sleeping. I'd say that that's a pretty good skill. <laughs> I didn't say this had to be relevant, okay? I just said we're writing down our skills. So for me, I'm gonna put sleeping because I really love to sleep. And finally, I said one of my skills is enjoying food and drink. I think I'm a bit of a queen of beverages. I really love all kinds of drinks and especially things like coffee. And I really love food. Um, going and sharing a meal with people um, is something that I really, really, really enjoy doing. And therefore to join in with that, I've said that one of my gifts is hospitality. Um, I love having other people around my dinner table or taking people out for a coffee. Um, and just genuinely being hospitable, especially when that relates to food and drink. Okay, so you've got a thing like this. Yours might look entirely different from mine. If yours isn't as busy as this, if you've only written one or two things down, I want you to stop this video again. Find at least six things that you know that you're gifted or skilled in. I promise you they're there. Now then. I'm just gonna give you a few ideas of some things that you might want to do for the barbecue stick. So we've already had the idea that you might have a song or a poem which you'll perform on the night. Something else you could think of is a painting or a drawing, something that expresses something about your faith that could be displayed on the evening or it could be something that you share on social media or just something you share with a few mates, something that really expresses who you are in Jesus, or something about Jesus that you love. If that's your gift, write it down. I love drawing, I love painting, something like that. Something else that you might think about is sharing your testimony. Now that can be through words like this, just on a screen, sat on your sofa, um, but also think creatively. If you're someone who loves choreography maybe, or you're very good at animation, think about sharing your testimony using that skill. Maybe you could write an entire dance about how you came to know Jesus. Wouldn't that be an amazing thing to share with friends? And finally, just another idea is you could write a blog post or talk on a particular thing that relates to your life at uni um, and how your relationship with Jesus ties into that. A lot of people as we're approaching exam season might be thinking about how they never get any stillness in their life. And so that could be an example. This isn't an exhaustive list though, so please do take a few minutes to think more about what you're really good at and how you could share Jesus with your mates at university. So, we've got our ideas, what it is that we're good at. There's plenty of it. I know that Holy Spirit loves to give gifts to people, and so I know that each one of you has a gift that you can share with people in the coming few weeks. That's great news, isn't it? So our next task is to think about our friends. I said before, you're an expert in your mates, not me. So you know what your friends love. Think about various groups of friends or specifically think about the group or one or two friends that you want to invite to barbecue stick at the end of this term. They're the people we're gonna be focusing on. Think about what they love, what makes them tick, what it is that you talk about the most and then just write that down on another sheet of paper. So pause this video again, just for a couple of minutes while you think about your mates. Okay, welcome back. So again, I've got myself a little bit of paper that says friends here. I've not got an exhaustive list, 
And I've thought just about a few different mates who I know who I'd love to come to know Jesus. What do they love? Well, they love coffee. I think I can think about many, many conversations about different brewing methods of coffee or the different kinds of things that we have in our home. Um, and so coffee definitely has to go on there. Being busy, being a very extroverted person means that actually quite a lot of my mates are also very busy, very extroverted people. So I'm going to put that on there. They're the kind of people who love to get involved in activities. Then I've put board games. I have a bunch of mates, different groups, um, who often come over for brunch on a Saturday morning or sometimes we hang out in the evenings and we just have a, a whole few hours of playing new board games and, and ha long into conversations over that. And so that's a really good one, I think. And then finally, I have a very small group of friends who love natural wine. Um, that's a kind of very niche kind of specialism or interest. Um, and it's the kind of wine that doesn't have sulfates in it. Um, and that's interesting. And you'll see why I've chosen that in a minute to put down. So here I've just thought about a few of my mates. Obviously I could have gone on for ages. And this is something you can come back to when you think about how you can creatively share Jesus with your mates. We want to meet our friends where they're at find something that they love and then show them how Jesus fits into it. Now, at this point you might be saying, I've thought about my mates Louise, I've thought about what I'm good at, but there's no way that they're gonna be interested in any of this. Or there's no way I could possibly relate these hobbies to anything else. Okay, so we're gonna address a few things that might hold you back from sharing the gospel here. The first one might be that you think that it's weird. Guys, we are countercultural. To be a Christian, to be someone of faith in the 21st century in Europe is somewhat a little bit strange. We are out of the ordinary. And that is absolutely something that our friends might find strange about us. But at the end of the day, they are still our mates, right? I wonder if you have some friends like I do. Maybe a friend who really loves D&D &D and talks about it quite a lot. Or at least you know that they spend quite a lot of their time thinking about how to develop their character. Maybe you have a friend who constantly has live score on their phone. They always know what's going on in the football. They always know what the score is and who's playing, even if it's not their team. Possibly even if it's not in their country. Maybe, like me, you've got a mate who really, really, really loves coffee. And so they'll talk about different temperatures of boiling the coffee at, or they'll talk about different beans or different grinds. Whatever it is that your friends are really passionate about, you probably know about it. It's because they talk about it. And the likelihood is, is that you've spent many a time listening to what they're excited about. And whether or not you're excited about it as well, you've loved listening to it because they are mates and it's exciting for them. I want to share some good news with you. A few years back uh, here at ICTUS, um, the IFES group in Belgium, we asked all of our students to ask their mates, would you find it weird if I inv uh, invited you to read the Bible with you? A hundred percent of them said they wouldn't find it weird if their mates invited them to read the Bible with them. That is a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people who are friends with Christians, who know that the Bible and our faith is such an important part of our life, that of course they wouldn't find it weird if we wanted to invite them into that. Now they might say no, <laughs> this survey doesn't tell us how many of them would actually go ahead and do it, but they certainly wouldn't find it weird. Your friends will not find it weird that you want to share something that's so important to you. And so I encourage you, go ahead and do it. Just let they, with no boundaries or no, um, no holdbacks at all, will go ahead and share the things that they love with you. We have another thing as well. The good news is, is that last time I checked, the God of the whole universe wasn't D&D. &D, and the God of the whole universe wasn't coffee. The good news for us is that the God of the whole universe the makers at the seas and the stars, a person who holds the keys to all wisdom and all knowledge, that's who we're sharing about. Holy Spirit is with us to convince our friends and we are sharing truly the best news that's ever been shared. Now, if that doesn't give you a vote of confidence, I'm not sure what will. 
maybe it's helpful to share a little thing from my university years. When I was in a choir, I definitely knew that I stood out a little bit. The way that maybe I talked about my life or my priorities was quite a lot different from the other people in my group. I would often feel that that meant that I didn't really belong or I shouldn't go and hang out at a pub after choir or whatever. And so I had this little mantra that I would say to myself, it's a bit corny, but bear with me. And I'd say to myself, I am a daughter of a king. That makes me a princess. Therefore, I have a place here. Now, I've never been the kind of gal to be into fairy tales or kingdoms or anything like that. But I did realise the enormity of the fact that we are co-heirs with Christ. That we are daughters and sons of the king. And that means that we are valuable. So if any of you have got any feeling that maybe you don't fit in, maybe you don't belong, guys, you do. And I promise you, your friends see that as well, whether they know Jesus or not. So that's where we're at. We know that we deserve to have a place. We know that our friends care about us. And we've got our skills and what our friends love all ready to go. So, are you ready to put this into practice? All right, let's go. So, first of all, I've thought about what I'm comfortable at doing. So if I take all my skill sets, I can say to you, it feels right that maybe I can do a few things um, when it comes to the following project. So I could write a song, I could share a poem, um, and maybe I could write a talk. Those feel like, from my skills, the three things that I, it might be feasible for me to do. So I'm going to park those to one side and I'm going to say those are the things that for this project I could do. Then we thought about my friends. Now think about your friends. What would give them the most animated conversation? How can you involve your stuff in the conversations they're already having? Maybe it's social justice or music. And um, just have a think about what genuinely animates conversation with your friends. So I'm going to go with one specific friendship group, which I mentioned before. It's the group of friends who meet at a local wine bar and are really passionate about natural wine. Now, I don't really know quite as much as them, but I do enjoy hanging out with them. Um, and I do know a fair amount. And so these friends are who I'm going to focus on. Now, obviously, I can't invite them to your barbecuistic event, but I can think about some kind of way that I can naturally share the gospel with them in that context. So I'm going to slightly focus on something that I want to grow in because that's the point of the Greenhouse Mentoring Group. And so I'm going to go ahead and choose to write a poem. Um, and I could choose to record that or I could choose to share it at an event. But also my thought is, is that here, I actually can share this just round the table at the bar with my mates. Um, you know, just bring it really naturally into conversation. Hey, I wrote a poem. Um, it kind of relates to what we're doing here. Like, is it good if I share it with you? Have a think about how you can make this personal as well as more widely available. Um, especially if it's for a specific group of mates. It's great if you get to share it with them one on one, isn't it? So, next I then have to think about how this very specific niche interest might relate to Jesus. It does. Now, you might think I've cheated a bit here because I chose wine and obviously Jesus did his first miracle with wine. Maybe a little bit. But I promise you that everything that you've just thought of, you can somehow relate back to Jesus. If it's good, and it, it's fun, then God is somehow involved, right? We might not be able to find an exact link. And so I'd encourage you to chat to the other participants and chat to my team um, as the weeks go on, help yourself, help one another to find um, something in the Bible that somehow relates to this. Or it could be a particular event in your life that will help you relate to this. So we're gonna ask for um, what you want to do, how your friends are going to relate to it, and finally how Jesus relates to that thing. Those are our three steps. 
And then we're going to ask Holy Spirit for some inspiration about how we can bring these threes together. So for me, I'm going to write a poem about natural wine and I'm going to somehow link in the miracle at Cana. Make sense? Okay, so take a few minutes and write down as many combinations of the things that you have on your paper as you can think of. Okay, now my final piece of advice for you before I go, my top tips and tricks. My first one is going to be just do it. I know I'm not Shia LaBeouf, but I do think I need to say this. A few months ago, I bought my mum a brand new notebook and some pens. Um, she kind of for quite a few years has sent me little plot lines for novels and it kind of became a bit of a joke between us, but I did actually think some of them were quite good. And so to encourage her, I brought her this notebook and nice pens. And then when I was back home, I saw that she has a book on her bookshelf and it's called something like how to write your first novel. So I read the first page and the first page says something like this. No author ever wrote their best-selling novel with the first draft. I think that's kind of obvious, right? The best advice that that author gave people who are trying to write their first novel is to just write. To write possibly the worst thing that you've ever written, but finish writing. Then you can go back and edit as much as you like. So I'd encourage you as you think about time constraints as is, and as you try and hold yourself back by trying to bring the most perfect thing the first time, you're not going to, go ahead and write something. Even if you think it's terrible, just write something. Okay, now the final tips I have are to use normal language. Guys, your mates do not speak Christianese. <laughs> to try your best as you go through your first draft to take out all those weird words that we use and use words that they might get. And finally, to be yourself. It's kind of weird if you're sharing something with your mates and suddenly you become this other person. Be relaxed if you're in front of a camera, be yourself. Don't try and get into something that you don't understand. <laughs> be yourself, chat about things that you love, chat to the people that you love and share something really, really good in the coming weeks. Martine has loads and loads of advice and wisdom for you guys, so make sure that you use her. And I really look forward to seeing you when we get together for our live event. And I cannot wait to see what you share. Good luck, you're gonna be great.